Okay, it's Mr. Palmer here with another little video on computer science. Before you watch this one, make sure you go over your notes on processor components, opcodes, and operands. Oh, oh, and check out the uh, FD cycle as well. That will probably help you too. So this one's uh, the final little one in the series on uh, low-level languages, uh, looking at memory addressing techniques. Okay, so uh, big questions. First of all. Uh, by the end of this video you should be able to think about why do the different memory addressing techniques exist so what is the particular uniqueness in the features of that um, particular addressing technique why do we so therefore why do we use it okay and you should be able to think about the drawbacks of each of those addressing techniques um, that should help you to describe the four different methods that we discuss in here all right so the first thing, uh, obviously, you need to remember what the operand is and the opcode, right? So the operands contain the data or the instruction that you want to operate upon. Okay, so an this is an example instruction. We've got the opcode there on the left-hand side uh, from the most significant bit down. Then we've got the oper operand following that in the remaining 12 bits. Okay, so um, if the opcode's got 8 bits, 2 to the 8, so it's 256 possible instructions. And with the operand 12 bits, uh, sorry, 16 bits there. Okay, so 2 to the 16, so there's a maximum value of 65,536. So you can basically have 64k of memory, um, which you could address possibly uh, in a computer system, which is a bit rubbish, isn't it? If you think about it, um, obviously, um, you know, you're talking about 32 bit, 64 bit. Um, higher number of possible memory locations that can be addressed but still uh, you may have you know you may you will hit limitations in the physical number of memory locations you can address um, sometimes you want to use some of those bits in the operand for other reasons mm -hmm. okay so then that limits uh, the number of addresses again in this case uh, once you take out those four bits you only got 12 left which only leaves you with 4k of possible memory that could be addressed which is quite rubbish, let's be honest, all right? So, um, the first memory technique that we want to think about here is immediate addressing, all right? Uh, with immediate addressing, the actual data is contained within the operand, all right? Uh, that's not particularly useful though. Well, in this case, for example, if it was an add instruction, the add, op so the opcode, uh, they would say add and it would indicate that the uh, operand is the data to be operated upon all right um, that's not particularly useful though because uh, if you want to change the value then you have to change the program all right the the actual coding uh, the other um, thing here that doesn't make it particularly useful is other um, instructions in the program can't refer to this bit of data as well okay so um, an alternative to this is to use direct addressing, where the operand actually contains the address in memory. So pretty much all the examples that I've been talking about in previous videos have been using direct addressing um, in the example. Okay, so in this case, uh, the operand contains, uh, if you turn that into decimal, uh, I mean, it's uh, 4,414. So that operand points at that memory location. And that data item, which is 188, is then loaded into the memory data register um, in order to be operated upon. Okay. Now, um, still, there's limitations of that, obviously, because um, you're limited by the number of bits in your operand, and therefore you will be limited in the physical amount of memory that you can actually address. Uh, indirect addressing, all right, is the technique where the instruction word contains a memory address, but then that memory address points to another address in memory, usually because the actual memory location, right, is larger than uh, the, the operand, okay? So that means that in the memory location, you can store a larger address uh, that points out um, somewhere further in the memory than could possibly be addressed in the operand, all right? So what that looks like is, I got the same operand as before, but this time I'm using indirect addressing. So that's pointing at 4144. That contains 10,098. All right. So that is a pointer towards that next memory location where the data can then be retrieved and loaded into the memory data register. All right. Um, so you can see that the advantage of this obviously is that you can uh, address, you can um, get at access 
um, larger amounts of memory than you can with direct addressing. However, the disadvantage of this is that uh, you, it takes uh, slower execution because um, you need an extra memory cycle. Yeah, one cycle to jump to the original uh, where the operand is pointing, and then another memory cycle to move from there to the um, the, the pointed the point that used to follow the pointer to then retrieve the data. Um, some uh, systems will have an instruction that points out that um, you're using indirect addressing. So the instruction set itself, the instruction will be um, indicative that you're using indirect um, addressing. In some um, instruction sets, you use a flag bit. So that bit will then point out whether um, you're using indirect addressing or direct addressing. Obviously, if you're using uh, a, a, a one of those bits as a flag, you've just reduced the amount of me memory again that you can access um, by a factor of two. Following on from that, you've got relative addressing. Okay, so it's kind of similar in approach to direct addressing. Okay, um, however, uh, this time the operand ind indicates an offset which is relative to a base address. All right. So um, the offset, for example, uh, could be n and the base address will be 10. Uh, so therefore, the actual data allocation will be n plus 10. Right, and the base address obviously can change. To pick, it could be anything. Right, so for example, in this case, um, our operand indicates that the offset is going to be 4414 right and we add that to the base address of 10,000 which then will mean that my uh, instruction will point at memory location uh, so that should be a hundred thousand right my um, memory location then points out that loc uh, the address will then point at that location and that's the data that was retrieved retrieved and um, brought back to the uh, memory data register. All right, this is quite useful because uh, the address is always determined as being relative to a particular base address. Yeah, so um, if you just all you need to do, if you think about um, uh, the functions of an operating system, you think about memory management, you think about segmentation and paging, okay, and moving f uh, page files around. Yeah, um, programs basically can be relocated in uh, memory okay and then in order to access them all you need to do is to just change the base address based on where you're moving the file you know the page files to all right uh, now you've got index addressing this is the final one okay this, so this is similar now to relative addressing but this time what we're doing is we're storing the index value in an index register okay so the effective address that we're trying to um, retrieve data from is calculated from the index added to the address which is in the operand yeah so uh, oh, the index register by the way is the extra register that I talked about in the previous um, video in the series all right so in this if we have an index of n and the address comes in the operand as x then the effective address is going to be n plus x yeah so uh, if we're looking at the particular operand above, we can see that n equals 1, and then the address is 3154. Yeah, so in the memory on the left hand side, you can see okay, my RAM, there's my RAM, and I've got different bits of data and 3151, 3152, 3153, blah blah blah. Okay, and 3154 onwards, I've got an ordered block of data. Okay, where I'm storing similar data in a group, for example, in an array. Yeah. And um, now I want to process some parts of the array in a particular way. In this case, I'm not starting from the first element of the array. I'm starting from the second one. That's why I've said n equals 1. Because when you add them together, you get 3155. And that's the memory uh, location that I want to start my processing from. Okay. So index addressing basically is an effective way of accessing blocks of data in the memory. Okay. Where we want to process large, large chunks of that data in the same way. Because then my index where which is one is stored in the index register, okay, 
and then I can use a branching instruction to jump out. So my flow control will use a branch instruction to go out, call the instructions for processing that uh, that data item. Yeah. Then my index register will increment, and then the branch instruction will be called again to call those same instructions for the next memory element along, and the index register will keep incrementing. All right. Um, within uh, while it's looping. Uh, to repeat those instructions to process each of those data items in the block. Okay, so there were the four different um, methods that we talked about there. Just remember that uh, when we're talking in about low-level languages and assembly, right, we're not talking about binary, we're talking about the use of mnemonics to create human readable instructions. So for example, that add instruction might actually just be add num1 because I can declare num1 in my program and then the assembler will take care of all the memory locations and tracking where everything is and then we can just write a simple program using uh, mnemonics um, to manipulate the data all right so that's the end of that video hopefully you understand about uh, why different memory addressing techniques exist you should be able to describe the features of the four techniques that I've discussed over here and you should know um, what the drawbacks of each of the different addressing techniques are where they could be applied and what the limitations of those might be. Thank you very much and I'll see you in another video soon.